you say that gerrymandering is bad. For instance, that's what the affirmative says. They come up there and say, this type of abuse of the redistrict redistricting system is bad. It's, it's terrible. It's abusing the system for the gain of politicians. You could come back and say, actually, we recognize it's happening, inherency, but it's a good thing. Why? Because studies show that it increases political competition. And actually, studies do show that. Um, that was an argument that was made. But that's an a disagreement about significance. Someone says it's bad. You say, actually, it's a good thing. Or you could say that the bad effects are a good thing and accept that. So in, in speak, the bad things that we're fixing are called harms. A harm in your affirmative is something that we see in the current system that's bad in the status quo. And we're trying to fix it with, with our plan. Um, give me an example of a harm for just anything under uh, the Middle East or electronic surveillance? Lives. Lives? Okay, um, where specifically in the Middle East? So there's an example of a harm. A harm could be lives lost, people are dying. And your harm could be in Gaza. Um, your, your, your harm could be basically anywhere, um, any case. People are dying in, in Syria. Okay? And so your policy would be, ar would be aimed to fix that. Harm, people are dying. Um, Syria, we'll put that there. And so, we can debate about lots of things, but your plan um, could be to send military aid to try to stop the violence, right? That's your plan. So, that's how an affirmative would structure it. We call your bad things harmed. Maybe another harm could be um, instability of the region. So, the Violence in Syria causes a cascade effect, which causes the region, um, basically the country, because its economy is crashing, because it's not a stable country. Other countries are crashing because they rely on Syria. When that stuff kind of happens, everything goes down. It could be another harm. So what you want to do, what you're trying to do, is try to fix everything um, with your plan. That's what your plan tries to solve. Technically, other arguments, disadvantages, or advantages fall under significance. So these are types of arguments that are used on both sides, but they fall under this talk issue. Let's talk about those for a second. Um, advantages are good things that you would say come out of your plan. So advantage, um, advantage is uh, live save. OK, uh, maybe US presence. You can list all the good things that come out of your policy. Those are your advantages. The negative comes up and says, actually, there are lots of bad things that come out of your plan, and these are the disadvantages. Um, and then you list your disadvantages. Um, money. Uh, you could argue about stability. You could say that US intervention might uh, make the region more unstable. Okay. Um, a number of number of different disadvantages to giving harm. I was started to giving aid to Syria. You think of what bad things come about, but that all falls under significance. And these are the types of arguments that talk about why. So significance or inherency sound a little similar, maybe. There's a little bit of confusion. Well. A lot of people are confused, and I don't know, I mean, I see Thaddeus laughing. <laughs> a lot of people put significance arguments under inherency and inherency arguments under significance. There is a difference. They serve different purposes. Inherency is what's happening. Significance is your spin on why that matters. Okay? So, inherency talks about the raw facts. This is is, was, and always will be. 
significance says the world is going to fall apart, or this will harm our liberty, or we'll lose money and lives. Right. Significance is why. Significance is why it matters. Okay. So this is this is in two sentences sums up the difference between inherency and significance. Here's a one example. Babies are dying. Okay, that's a fact. Now that could be sort of an impact of itself, but the fact that they're dying in moral moralistic, the fact that we care about human life. The fact that babies are the most precious and innocent lives that we have makes that a point of significance. So inherency could be your, uh, your facts, almost your warrant, right? Inherency could be disagreement about what's happening. Um, so an inherency disagreement saying, um, okay, so we've got people dying. Um, so terrorist bombing, right? people dying, um, the fact that people are getting bombed is your inherency. The people dying and the fact that that's a bad thing is your significance. Now if you wanted to disagree and say that people were dying is a good thing, I don't know why, that would be a disagreement on the level of significance. You could say that maybe people have to die in order to make the conflict better and eventually resolve it. I don't know, some smart person might f figure it out someday. True. Um, I mean, I guess there could be a legitimate argument there. But an inherency argument would be actually say, no, actually not a lot of people are um, being bombed, not a lot of people are dying. You have that fact wrong. But most of the time if someone has a fact, the fact is going to be right because no one wants to come up and say things that are false because that's just bad. That's mean. So, so Good inherency arguments bring new facts to the table. Say, hey, you didn't mention this. This actually changes everything. Everything we know. So we talked about uh, gerrymandering. Saying that uh, politicians redraw district lines is a point of inherency. Saying that this is bad is a point of significance. Saying that it abuses the political process. Um, so someone can agree with the inherency. Someone can agree with the fact. Um, but just argue significance. And you can beat them on that. You can say that actually we don't need to solve this problem because gerrymandering is good. And there are studies that show that it's good. So if you actually are getting rid of it, if you are solving for this problem as it were, you would cause a disadvantage. You would cause something bad to happen because the good effects of gerrymandering would go away. And that's tying all your arguments together. What? Yes, the last stock issue is what we call solvency. Also, a really cool note is a lot of if like if somebody that you just did, and this happens in life too, uh, like basically every plan or action you can possibly think of has some sort of bad effect. In the real world, in like history, that's ever not had some sort of bad effect. So when somebody comes up to you and says, our plan is so good, nothing bad will ever happen. Like there's no possible So you can kind of use use your mind to think about how they're there. And even in, in, in this tournament, well, that we'll do in two weeks, there will be kids that will be like, there's no disadvantage to our plan. It's like, well, there's no significance. Your plan isn't significant because nothing happens. So that's just a random question. For everything that yeah. there's good, it also happens. Right. And a lot of debate is putting your spin on it. So. Um, you could say like all these things are advantages. They could say that, um, I don't know, what's a debatable advantage? For um, Middle East. Uh, in increased, increased stability. Um, they could say that the advantage is increased stability, right? That's a good thing to make the region more stable, to have less chaos. Or you could come up and say as the negative, stability is a bad thing in the Middle East because what you're doing is you're creating artificial stability. It's not going to last. 
because you're lumping groups together that have no business being with each other, and that's why there's violence in the Civil War. Unless you let the instability happen and let them separate after the conflict, nothing is going to change. And so it's a bad thing. So even things that people claim as advantages, you could show that they're actually bad disadvantages by arguing significance or your spin on it. What is the impact? And is there actually a detriment to that impact? Solvency is the fourth stock issue. You can abbreviate it as SOL if you want for note taking. Solvency equals workability. The effects of plan, what effects will happen? Basically, what they're saying is, this is our bridge, right? Our plan is to send aid to Syria to stop people from dying. And this plan is going to stop people from dying. Well, remember, claim, warrant, impact. They're saying people are dying. We're going to send aid. That means that we're going to stop people from dying. You just said that. That's a claim. You need a warrant. So solvency is your, I guess as it were, your bridge or your warrant to say that your good effects will come about. To say from your plan to your advantages, the good things, is all an issue of solvency. So why could we say that um, it would save lives? Well, I guess it would increase, this marker doesn't work, it could increase money to re rebels. Um, increase rebel power, right? Um, humanitarian aid. Okay, so, um, yes? True. Um, but you'd probably, if we're giving aid, like money wise or weapons wise, yeah, we're, we're going to try to help the people that are already there. So basically, these are the effects. And we could say there, um, the affirmative solvency points are that we have um, money to give to rebels. The rebels are fighting the government. The government is what is killing the people. The government is what, it's an oppressive regime. It's putting people in jail. It's just, it's genocide, basically. And the rebels are trying to stop that. So if we increase the power of the rebels, then we could stop the genocide. But the other plank could be also we're giving money to people for food, for shelter, and people die of starvation. They die because they don't have enough money to cross the border into a safe country. We need to help the people too. And so that's your solvency. So you say, because this aid is going to here and this aid does these things, then we have lives saved. Simple? Sort of. You can argue about any, you can argue at any of these points, right? So a negative um, would come up and ask, what would happen if you did this in the real world? That's what solvency asks. Um, solvency asks, what happens if this were true? If you had your policy. So you could say, you send aid. But what happens is, most of the time when you send aid, it's intercepted. Because it's not in a stable region in the first place. The most powerful people will get the money. And the most powerful people in Syria right now are ISIS and the terrorists. So actually, your solvency argument is that money to terrorists. Okay, So your money doesn't actually go to where it was intended, because in the real world, what happens when we blindly send checks overseas is that when you give it to poor women and children, the uh, terrorists come and beat them over the head and kind of take it. That's just what happens in every country where we do this. And so that's your solvency.